breaking down all the plays and getting you in the action. We've got you covered all season long. Welcome to the BCSN Nation podcast powered by Marco's Pizza. Oh, hello, everyone. We are back. The January 11th, 2023 edition of the BCSN Nation podcast, as always, powered by Marco's Pizza. I am Justin Feldkamp, joined alongside Rhett Boyd as we break down some high school boys and girls basketball on this week's edition of the podcast. As always, you can take a look at us on social media channels, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at BCSN Sports, all one word, BCSN Sports. Every Wednesday at 3 o'clock, tell your friends, tell your family members, Wednesdays at 3 o'clock, wherever you get your podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and we also have it on our YouTube channel at BCSN Sports. So check it out. All right, Rhett, another week is in the books. We are out of the holiday tournament portion of the schedule, everyone either played in, or not necessarily everyone, but a majority of our area teams played in a local tournament or a regional tournament. Some departed uh, the state of Ohio and went somewhere south, whether that was in Florida or Arizona. Got that needed experience, and now they bring it back to a new year as they continue their seasons here. But anything that struck you since your last appearance on the podcast uh, that is good for our area or a team or something, a tidbit that you want to bring up. Yeah. I mean, I, I like what central Catholic did. You know, we, we talked about in past podcasts, how they get off to a late start because of the football success, you know, they didn't get the normal amount of scrimmages that other teams had gotten and and all they've done, you know, since the start of the season is knock off, you know, St. John's by double figures. And uh, they go out to Arizona and they, and they are three, and zero out there and, and be a, a very good Cleveland, I mean, Cleveland Heights. I think it was the game they played the third game out there. Had to go all the way to Arizona to play yeah, Cleveland I know, Heights, but, from two hours away. Yeah, but um, no, I mean they've got off to a great start. I think a lot of those we talked about. They have football guys on their team too, and I think the the, the basketball guys combined with the football guys, you know, there's a lot of winning that goes on there. They got to the regional last year in basketball, state finals, uh, state championship this year in football. I think it's it's cohesively coming together for them. Yep. Off to a great start, and it's only going to snowball. All right, so uh, the goals and objectives of our BCSN Nation podcast to spread the wealth, both boys and girls, and then to recognize or go from week to week and try to highlight the different teams within the different conferences or leagues that we cover. So a primary focus on the track, the NLL, City League, TAC, and Northern Buckeye Conference. So we're going to go towards a little bit of those uh, leagues and conferences right now. Starting on the boys' side, Start, led by Coach Matt Wortham. They beat Scott this past Friday in a first place uh, on the line type of game in the City League. And then they followed that up the very next night and Start beat Whitmer and really took it to Whitmer in the Battle of Trevainsville Road. We've seen Whitmer dominate Start in recent years in football. But it was the opposite effect on the basketball court on the boys' side, Rhett. We saw Start get off to a great start. Quite honestly, it wasn't even close at halftime. Whitmer played better in the second half. But I was highly impressed with what Start was able to do the last week. Yeah, and, you know, traditionally, first of all, Matt Wortham is one of the best coaches in Northwest Ohio. And I've, and I've been on record as saying that for years. He does an outstanding job of – uh, being relatable, but yet that firm but fair type of coach, you know, with his kids is a lot with them on and off the floor, and and he is a he is excellent in terms of defense, teaching defense, and understanding that defense is going to win you championships, even when you don't have your best offense, your defense will keep you in it. He he abides buys that philosophy. So, yeah, beating Scott is four and four and I've seen Scott in person. I'm high on Scott. You know, they got three guys that can go offensively, three guys that can get you 15-plus every night. And I thought they were going to give Start some problems. Uh, but but Start, you know, again, defensively, they were outstanding. The ball game got a win. And then, you know, I, I was asking somebody, what you know, what's the score of the Whitmer Start game? They said 33-10. to 10. I go, no, 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 not the JV game. The varsity <laughs> game, they're 33-10 to 10. I'm like, at half. Right. I'm like, whoa. So, um, yeah. And so, so I think with, with Start this year, you know, they got the good inside-out game with Stone Edwards and, and Ramel Hightower. Yep. But when they lost that early game to Northview, I think a lot of people were like, eh, okay, you know, all right, you know, well, maybe, you know, they're, they're good, but how yeah. good? And, you know, not the other teams, especially from the track, a lot of attention. But, hey, after that weekend, oh, you yeah. got to start taking notice of the Star Spartans. Yeah, and to think that you're, you're going to have a 100% consistent type of performance out of 
15 to 18 year olds <laughs> on a daily basis right. or a game to game basis is just not achievable. I guess in some unique circumstances, if a team goes undefeated or a, a major 27 and one type of season, yes, you could apply that attribute to them. But you know, you're, you're going to have some some stinkers, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but yeah, I definitely am high on start and, and what they have been able to achieve and and with what Coach Matt Wortham. Do you think that they are a team that can win in multiple ways? Can they win games where it's, you know, 47 to 46, mm-hmm. but they can also win games that are 81 to 74? Yes, I do. And I've seen it. I've seen it out of Matt Wortham's teams in the past. I mean, it was just a couple of years ago uh, in the, it was in the uh, district finals. They played Whitmer, actually. And, that game was like 36-34. It was at, it was at Savage, you know, yeah. Savage Arena. And it was, it was a very low-scoring game, high 30s, I think it was, maybe low 40s. So I've seen them win with, with defense. I've seen them win with offense, people out, outscore an opponent as well. So, yeah, this because Matt Werther puts so much emphasis on defense, you know that that's going to that's gonna carry home and away. It's going to travel, and especially in tournament play, because you, as you advance in that tournament, you know, guard play, your, your team just get better. And when you play in those bigger venues, offensive numbers seem to shrink, and that lends itself to the to the defense. And I know he preaches that, and uh, it's a lot of fun to watch because those guys, when they're hitting on all cylinders defensively, yeah, uh, they're very good. I'm curious to see how Whitmer bounces back. When yeah. uh, Dion was in here last week, we were talking about Whitmer uh, pretty extensively, and I'm, I was kind of surprised at that outcome against Start. So I'm now curious. Okay, how do you respond? How do you bounce back for Whitmer's side of things? Yeah, and I it, well. You, <laughs> No, you have no time because tonight, or you know, it's Tuesday. On Tuesday, Tuesday night, night yep. you know they play Central Catholic, right. you know, at home. So you don't have time to lick your wounds. It's, it's you know, you turn the page and you get ready for a, a big time ball game. Talking to Coach Anthony Stacy, um, it's a team that he really likes. Yeah. He likes the cohesion, the chemistry, um, the ability. Um, they're very coachable. Uh, but he says one thing we have to work on between now and the end of the year is consistent effort, and energy, especially. And that's huge, especially with the style of play that they like to play, which is an up-tempo press. You better bring it because if yeah. you don't turn teams over between the circles of the front line of that press, it's numbers on the back end, and, they, and teams can make you pay. And so I think, you know, he says we're still working on that consistency. He believes they'll get there, but tonight's one heck of a test. All right. Also, in uh, well, as we talk about Whitmer, let's stay within the Three Rivers Athletic Conference in St. Francis. This past Friday, on the road at Clay, got a buzzer beater, an errant shot, a rebound, put back, game winner. St. Francis wins. Just uh, wanted to talk about and elaborate on what Coach Jamie Kaczmarek came over from uh, Cardinal Stritch. This is now his second year as the leader of the Knights on Bancroft, and to see where this team is going not only for this year but going forward because we have seen what he did at Cardinal Stritch we know his for those who don't know he's got an extensive coaching background not only at the high school level but uh, for a long decades long time at the college level including at Ohio State for a portion of his career so uh, he is he's been there done that on a variety of levels in the basketball world but what have you seen from St. Francis so far this year? Uh, they're better, and they're, they're significantly better from a talent standpoint, number one. And we knew that was just a matter of time once Coach Kaczmarek got there. We saw it with Stritch, like you said. And and now they're having they're having some success, and they're getting confidence, and now so they're putting wins together that they just didn't have a season ago. I believe they doubled their win total already from a season ago. Yeah. So the confidence is high there. And when you look at the pieces that he has – he has veteran, experienced guard play in, in Jameson Heck. He's become a veteran now. It's always he's a sophomore. Yeah, <laughs> he's, but he's been playing he's been since playing. day one as a yep, freshman. Yep, a year, for a year and a half now. Uh, Elvis Soroka, and then they they have at long athletic wings in Taylor Sanders, who got that put back uh, layup against uh, Clay the other night, and and Rasheed Dixon gives them some athleticism on the wings. And then you got size inside with Coop, who who can go, he can rebound with the best of anybody. So he's got some nice pieces. The problem is with them. Is one you play in the track, you know, with Whitmer and the Limas and you know, in Centrals and so forth. And two, offensively, they can have some tough nights. They, they, on average, they don't have a guy that averages double figures, so they really have to manufacture points um, and, and get it from a variety of different guys every night. Have a balanced attack. Uh, they can't. Re- they don't have that guy that you can lean on for you know, 15 to 20 like other teams can. So. Um, but they, they compete, they play hard, they're defending, 
you know, it's a team that's definitely made some strides and improvements uh, definitely from the last couple of years till now. Yeah, and it's it's beneficial, and I, I love parity. We see it in the mm-hmm. NFL where you have, you know, seven or eight teams that made the playoffs last year but aren't in this year's, uh, and it's a model that you know, I wish more professional leagues could, could adopt and implement. But then within the localized world here with the Three Rivers Athletic Conference, you know, it's great that we have some level of balance where a team can at least challenge and we don't get these – long uh, point differentials in, mm-hmm. in the top tier teams versus the bottom four teams kind of thing. Yeah. And you know, their, their losses in the league, two and two in the league uh, was to Lima and, and Whitmer. Uh, Whitmer controlled that game for the most part. One by, they were up 18 and a half, one by 18. So we're in that area and Lima beat them too. So that up tempo pressing physical athletic style of play really gave them problems. They have not played uh, central Catholic yet. Uh, they got St. John's this Friday, so they're going to be tested here the next couple of, couple of ball games. Um, but you know, but like I said, it, they've doubled their win total. They're better from a talent standpoint. They're executing better between the lines, and they're having success. And the confidence is high, and that's all you can hope for if you're Coach Catch America's growth. All right, let's move to the Northern Lakes League now. Uh, kind of two schools on both the boys and girls side, because as some of you might know, during the month of January, we have varsity girls and varsity boys back-to-back as opposed to the traditional format of freshman JV varsity boys on a Friday night. On Friday nights in January in the NLL, it's girls at 6 o'clock, boys at 7.30. And last week, we had Springfield against Perrysburg, and Springfield boys and girls both won and and both won by one point. Springfield boys upset Perrysburg 57 to 56, and the Springfield girls got by Perrysburg 34 to 33. Let's first start on the boys' side. Uh, we saw Jordan Combs named the player of the week, uh, and I hope he uses that Burger King gift card or Sean's Irish Ty- excuse me Sean's Irish Tavern gift card very wisely. Uh, Springfield taking down Perrysburg. We've talked about. Kyle Linehan and uh, his coaching job at Springfield and some of the pieces that he had coming back. He's a little more confident in the uh, win total, I guess you could project forward from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, and they got to win somehow, some way. It kind of doesn't matter with an NLL play, and especially when you can beat off, uh, beat the first-place team. Yeah, and, and Deanna and I talk about this a lot the last couple of years on, on Game Day Nation. Springfield has been right on the cusp. The win-loss record doesn't show up. They've been in a number of ball games last year specifically. They came down to literally the final possession, and they were on the wrong end of it almost every time. Yeah. And, and it's you, you know it's one of those things like God, we're so close. I talked to Coach Lehan about this in the preseason. It's like one thing you think, guys, we're right there. We're so close. It's just a matter of getting one. Once you get one, that can get you confidence and get you snowballing in the right yeah. direction. But you don't want to keep piling up loss after loss after loss of the buzzer, you know, like like they were a season ago. So, so what happens? You get a core group of guys back this year with some experience. Jordan Combs, one of the better point guards in the area. He can score. He can facilitate it. You got some length on the perimeter with Franklin, who had 14 points in that game against Perrysburg. And you got size inside with Merrill and Dominique Bracey. So they got some pieces, too. And they, they, they lost. So they start the year, lose to Finley at the buzzer. It's like, oh. You know, we, we preach all, all year. We're there. We're there. We're going to make. We're gonna get that, take that next. You lose to Finley at the buzzer to start the season. But in the last couple of weeks, they beat Fremont Ross in overtime, and then they come back and they beat Perrysburg in the final possession the other night. Um, you know, in a, in a huge game for them. So all of a sudden, now you got a team that's been competitive and close, yeah. but under the radar. Now they're over that hump. So it's gonna be really interesting to see because right now in the NLL, uh, you have Anthony Wayne with a half game lead over everybody else. And then you got three teams. Like there's four teams with one loss, but Anthony right. Wayne's played one more game, got one more win. They're a half game up. And then you got three teams with one loss. Half the league has one loss uh, as we enter the end of the first round and move on into the second round. It's going to be one heck of a league to watch. You talk about parity. <laughs> it'll be a lot of fun to watch that league. Right, and as you take a look at the standings, entering Tuesday's play, Anthony Wayne 4-1, and one, Northview 3-1, and one, Perrysburg 3-1, and one, Springfield 3-1, and one, Bowling Green 2-2, two and two, Napoleon 1-3, and three, Southview 1-3, and three, Maumee 0-5, oh and, and Maumee in their final year of the NLL before they transition to the Northern Buckeye Conference. So it will be interesting to see if we get any more types of Springfield upsetting Perrysburg if we get one of those uh, Napoleon, I've been impressed with some of their uh, points within some some segments of their games and being able to play at a higher caliber. It's a matter for them of putting a total four quarter effort together. It, it is, and, and and I like Bowling Green. Mason Roth has done a heck of a job. Talking about one of those teams that 
kind of under the radar. It's usually at the bottom of the NLL. Mm -hmm. They're right in the middle of it. Um, last year they were above 500, and this year they're right in the mix again. And um, they got some size. They got some really good. A lot of their football players play basketball. Brock Hastings, Evan Brandt, and they got Jabari Conway inside six seven. So they got some pieces too. They're they're betting they bet in ball games that they haven't won, and they they pulled out some big wins too. So that's a team to watch as well. All right, uh, on the girls' side, we brought up that Springfield got by Perrysburg. Springfield and Anthony Wayne seems to be the t two teams at the top of the Northern Lakes League when you're on the girls' side, and Springfield got it done uh, against an always well-coached Perrysburg team uh, by Coach Todd Sims. Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in watching Perrysburg the second round of the NLL play because they're, they're extremely young uh, in terms of um, – Aging experience. Yeah, Chloe Kilbride, the sophomore. Griggs is back this year. She played six games last year before she went down with an ACL. She's back now as a sophomore, playing better and better as of late. Um, getting reacclimated to you know to varsity basketball with that you know with her with her coming off of that injury that she had a year ago. Yep. Uh, and then you got some size inside with Wrigley Tackett, Megan Gibbs. So this team and they and so they took their lumps early. And I can't forget about Kelly Thames either, the freshman um, that they have who's who's really dynamic. And, and so early in the year, kind of their ups, their downs, typical young team, you know, learn, learning varsity basketball. They've, but they've hit their stride a little bit here in the last week or two. So I'm really looking forward to see them in the second round of NLL play because, you know, playing Springfield that close, to a lot of people might be surprising, not with a Todd Sims, Sims team, especially one that's gaining some experience. Yeah, and coming in late January, I believe it's January 27th, that boys-girls doubleheader will take effect when Springfield plays Anthony Wayne, so the top two teams in the girls' side of things. Uh, and it could be a very good game on the boys' side as well. So that will be a BCSN. That doubleheader will be a BCSN broadcast set up, so uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, one more note before we get to the questions of the week, Rhett. First team all BCSN is back for 2023. We've done it a couple years before. Uh, previous iterations of this on 13 ABC, First Team All Basketball Friday. Top 30, then a top 10, then a top 5. The top 30 will be released on Friday, February 3rd. So less than a month away, we are tracking all of the different top talents in our area. That's 30 boys and 30 girls, so 60 total. And then we'll whittle it down to 10 and 10 and 5 and 5. But uh, that iteration, I know quite a lot of people are interested in being on that list. And uh, we get feedback not only from uh, people here at BCSN and, and Rhett and Dion, uh, myself, but also feedback from the coaches and first-hand experience of them watching the teams, watching the players, watching film, etc. So it's not just we randomly pick 30 players uh, at large and then just put them on a list. It is a comprehensive effort, but just passing that along, we will have that on Friday, February 3rd. All right, time for our next segment. It's time for the BCSN Nation podcast question of the week. Send us your question on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook using the at BCSN Sports and hashtag BCSN Podcast. All right, as we continue here on the BCSN Nation podcast, powered each and every week by Marco's Pizza. Marco's Pizza, the place to be anywhere in Toledo. Thank you for sponsoring this podcast. Our question of the week, Genoa at Rossford, the game of the week on Friday night on BCSN2. Flip back between that game and then Rhett and Dion and Joel Sebastianelli during Game Day Nation from 7 to 10 o'clock and then Game Day Nation overtime from 10 to 10.30. Mark Kuntz slides in for the highlight portion of the evening. But Genoa at Rossford, these are the top two teams in the the Northern Buckeye Conference, Rhett, who has the edge? It's a great question because, you know, Rossford's been perennially at the top of the league, and usually it's Eastwood in Rossford, but now Genoa. Yep. Uh, they both have knocked off Eastwood, and Genoa's there. And Genoa's good. I, I wasn't very familiar with them, um, you know, start of the season, but over the over the holiday break, I got a chance to go to Old Fort, who was undefeated at the time, and watch them play. And, um, and Genoa knocked them off by double digits. Yeah. Um, after being down at the half, so and I'm like, and then I look at them. They got pieces too. They got really good guard play, and Skylar Jew and John Houston. Um, and then they got sides inside with with a freshman, Walter Plants, uh, who's been a, very productive with, for them offensively and defensively. And then they got, they got sides as well inside with, with some leadership in Aiden Brunkhorst, the quarterback of the Genoa football team, who led them to the playoffs. He's inside. 
He's kind of a pick and pop guy in the perimeter, but gives him some physicality on the inside on the, on the board. So they got some pieces. And I look at Rossford, they got exper- a veteran crew, experience crew, four guys that have been now playing for two or three years at the varsity level with Brandon Revels in the perimeter, Morrison and Murphy on the on the perimeter, and then you got Vorst on the inside. And, and so when you, you look, and if if the guards nullify each other, you look at Revel, you got uh, Brandon Revels, who had 21 against Perrysburg in, in a big-time ball game, yep. and, and you got uh, Vorst on the inside. I, I'm going to give Rossford a slight edge right yeah. now on paper just because they're hot right now. Brandon, yeah. Like I said, Brandon Revels, 20 against Perrysburg, Vorst. We know his high motor, his agility. Uh, on the inside, um, so I'm going to give them a slight edge, but it would not surprise me if Genoa came out on top either. Yeah, both of these teams entering Tuesday's play six and zero and six and zero in the NBC. Genoa overall nine and one, Rossford overall nine and two. So this is legit one A, one B. However, you want to slice it or dice it, and, and Rossford is fun to watch because they have multiple positions that can score the ball and that's what I like watching to them and then especially this day and age it's not every time you can have the ability to see a 6'9 6'10 player like Derek Forrest a future Indiana State Sycamore uh, man in the post he comes out set screens a little bit of outside mid-range game too uh, but he is a force we've seen plenty of dunks from him as well should be an entertaining game as well yeah he's and he's like I said his high boat he's gonna challenge three-point shots you know coming out you know closing out from the from the middle of the paint out to the perimeter, he's got that agility. And so it is. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch because, again, both these teams have depth in terms of scoring the ball. It's just a matter about execution for those 32 minutes. But uh, like I said, I'm going to give Rossford a slight edge at this point. Would not surprise me if jo- Genoa walked out of there with a win. And the Northern Buckeye Conference is a – double time round robin just like the NLL like we were talking about before so the first matchup between Genoa and Rossford is at Rossford it'll be on BCSN the rematch will be at Genoa later this season all right and another question uh, before we wrap it up and let you know the BCSN broadcast schedule for the next few days the Martin RPI what's the Martin RPI well it's right here it is similar for those football fans similar to Uh, The playoff point calculation for football teams across the state of Ohio, Martin RPI, somewhat similar. You've heard the RPI term, ratings percentage index, with the college hoops, NCAA teams, talking UT, BG, Ohio State, Michigan, every team in the country. Uh, That is developed into the net rankings, but the RPI is here at the high school level with Martin RPI and Toledo Central Catholic. They rank everybody uh, across the state and then rank everybody within their district for the postseason. But just in this one example, the Division II Top 25, the number one ranked team through January 8th in those rankings have Toledo Central Catholic, a team that we just talked about earlier in this podcast, as the number one team in the state. Legit, sure. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to knock them uh, from what I've seen from them. Again, they didn't have the luxury that everybody else has had, and all they've done is come out this season. They're, you know, they're eight and one, playing extremely well. They're challenged in the, in the Three Rivers Athletic Conference by some great teams, um, and I like them because you know, one, they are they're on the perimeter. They got veteran guard play, Michael Greenlee at the point guard position, Makai Leach, who I think has grown two inches from a season ago. They can really break you down. Yep. Uh, defensively in the half court, get into the lane and cause havoc. Then you got Isaiah Brenneman uh, on the inside and t- with Taiwan Clark. You know, obviously Taiwan Clark, the quarterback of the football team, so you know he's not phased by playing big big ball games. And right. so th- this is a group that is played with a lot of confidence. They expect to win. They don't hope to win. They expect to win. They because they've done it. Uh, like I said, with Central with a regional appearance a season ago, and then the football team winning the state. So you know, like I said, they got a lot of pieces. They're, they're Chemistry is good. They're cohesive, uh, and they complement each other extremely well. They're talents. So I'm not going to knock them. You know, they're in first right now. Okay, let's go. Yep, and as you'd expect with the pushback of their start to the regular season, as of these rankings being released, they were 8-1. and one. Chaminade Julian, based out of the Dayton area, they're number two with 13 games to their belt, so it's about a four-game difference uh, as of right now. But the give you the list of the top five, which you can also find at martin, M-A-R-T-I-N, R-P-I.com. Central Catholic, number one. Number two, Chaminade Julian. Three, Bishop Reedy. Three, Defiance. Five, Taft. And these are all teams that Central Catholic 
Catholic could play at some point in the postseason as you take a look at the rest of the top 25 within the D2 Martin RPI rankings. We also see Sandusky there at number 8. We see Shelby there at 11. See uh, Bellevue at 18. Uh, and that looks like that's the remaining Northwest Ohio Sandusky area teams from our area within the D2 top 25. But uh, always kind of cool. Just a, a, a list of any sorts is somewhat interesting to, to dive into and to see, you know, uh, maybe some more unbiased opinion. A computer plays a role in these rankings. So it's not just uh, what my eyeballs tell you. It's a mixture uh, to a, a different way to break down teams. Yeah, and especially when you break it down, because they also put out, like you said earlier, they put out the district how you rank in your district as yeah. well which is going to determine the seating yeah in this for the state tournament it's a, it's a new system that, that the coaches are intrigued by you're going to try and um which they all they're intrigued by it because it kind of eliminates some of the gamesmanship or shenanigans if you will when it comes yeah. to voting yeah. uh this for the seeds um so it's like here here it is and then you, now you have the flexibility as a coach to place yourself on the board appropriately where you feel you can create the best path for yourself um, you know, taking a look at those, the district, the ones that are broken down by district, you know, as you know, this team, God, I thought this team would be a little higher. This team might be maybe too high, you know, kind of yeah. look at that, but it's, it's pretty close. Um, for what I would think right now. Um, but it's, um, it's kind of goes, like I said, strength, the schedule quality wins in terms of division, like for division one schools, division one wins. And, yeah. it, and if you're one of the smaller schools, if you can get a win against a division, a a team from a higher division that helps yeah. not so much head to head. I think, I think we've seen that in the rankings, but um, you know, it's, they're, they're piloting it, see how it goes and, and we'll move on from there. But I think a lot of coaches are interested in, in like the concept. Yeah. And I think it's only beneficial as the season progresses because those numbers have a little more value because they've played more games. And it's fluid, result. obviously, right? It's comes out yeah. now they're, they're sending it out weekly. Um, you know, the updated Martin RPI rankings comes out weekly. I think uh, Saturday or Sunday they come out, and so it's interesting. Yep. All right, so uh, we'll be looking forward to continued rankings, especially for the teams in our area as we go forward here into January, February, and then March when we have tournament time at the regional and state level. All right, so here's our broadcast schedule for the rest of this week. A few highlights. We got wrestling on the mats, Southview at Bowling Green on Wednesday. We'll be looking forward to that. Uh, we also have Notre Dame at Fremont Ross on Thursday. Girls Hoops, 730 BCSN cameras will be there. Then Friday, Rhett will be in studio along with uh, Dion and Mark and Joel from 7 to 10.30. Genoa at Rossford, we just broke that one down. We also have Start at Bowser. We also have St. Francis, St. John's. That game is going to be at UT Savage Arena. 7 o'clock tip, varsity only. St. Francis, St. John's on BCSN from Savage, 7 o'clock. Springfield, Northview, Maumee Valley, Emmanuel Christian. We also have Bellevue Perkins and Willard Margareta. Girls Hoops, Northwood taking on Cardinal Stritch as well. Some highlights for Saturday, Mommy Bay Classic Wrestling Tournament at Clay at, at 12.30. The championship round should begin right around that time. And then we also have a makeup game from December. Got snowed out or frigid temperatured out, however you want to categorize it. Central Catholic is at Perrysburg. So track and NLL, it's going to be the last time we're able to say that. Track versus the NLL. And we'll see how that game plays out. It's at Perrysburg Saturday at 6 o'clock. That's an intriguing matchup. And a couple hockey, uh, the Mark Rasmus Memorial Tournament, St. Xavier taking on Northview and University School at St. John's. Those uh, games are at Tamo in Sylvania at 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock Saturday on BCSN. Head to bcsnnation.com for how you can watch those games either on the app and or on TV. All right, for Rhett, I'm Justin. Thank you for watching and or listening to the BCSN Nation podcast powered by Marco's Pizza. Have yourself a great week and we'll see you next Wednesday at 3 o'clock.